Hello, hello. Welcome to our first Photoshop tutorial. I am going to be starting from the very beginning. If you're already a Photoshop user, you probably will not find any of this helpful or useful at all. So later on, we'll be getting into some more complicated um, techniques and editing tools. But for today and for the foreseeable tutorials, they're going to be very, very basic. This is aimed at people who have no idea or very little idea of how to use Photoshop. So um, the first thing I'm going to explain is I'm going to give you a little tour, very quick tour of the Photoshop interface. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. So the most important area is your document window. Now, as you can see, I have one document open at the moment and I have one tab in my dock. If I had multiple images open, I would have this dock full of tabs. But at the moment, there's just the one. Up here, um, as with most software, you have your menu bar. So you've got lots of options here for editing and for tool selections. And the file, the file button is very similar that you would, you know, to what you would find in other software. You have a new, you have an open, you have a save. Um, and those are the buttons that we're probably going to be using to start with. Well, they are the buttons we're going to be using to start with. Um, I haven't shown you how to open a document, but you would go to file and open and select from whatever file it is your image is in. The other option for opening a document in Photoshop is to go to your photos, to right click on the image and to select the option open with Photoshop. Okay, so um, here you have your control panel. Um, at the moment, there's not a lot in it because I only have this tool selected, which is my move tool. The tool is showing here to say this is the one I have selected. And these are the options for your tool. So these are the options that you can um, you can select from while you're using your move tool. And as you move down the different tools, these will change, which moves on to this panel here, which is your tool panel. Um, it's your bread and butter, really. It's your fundamental tools, the basic tools. Um, there are some more complicated tools in there. A lot of them are self-explanatory. Um, we're going to be using a couple of these today. Over here is your layers palette. As you can see at the moment, there is just one image in here. It says background, and that is, of course, the image we are using. The, if you imagine these as they are layers of tracing paper. So this bottom image, you can add things on top of it, and you can see through each layer to see your underneath your background layer. So I always um, imagine them as being kind of sheets of tracing paper that are laid on top of an image. So you can add colour to one, you can add um, text to it, all different things that will lay on top of your main image. Now, a lot of the tools that we might be using will not use, will not work, sorry, <laughs> nervous during my first Photoshop tutorial. Um, they won't work if this background is locked. So the first thing we need to do before we try and do anything to an image, just to be sure, is we need to unlock it. And all we do is double click. We get this little new layers box up. This is where you can change the name of it. And that will appear here. And we're gonna hit OK. As you can see, that came up as layer zero. So that is now the name of our layer. So this is, this is based on, you have scanned an image and you need to straighten your image and you need to crop your image. That's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. As you can see, the image I have in front of me, it's a scanned image. It's spin scanned upside down and it's not very straight. So this is a situation you might be in if you're using images in your junk journals. Um, the only pointer I would say is please make sure you are abiding by copyright law. This is not an image I'm going to be using. It is just for tutorial purposes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this image the right way up. So in your menu bar, there is an image button, which you need to select. There is image rotation, and we are going to turn it 180 degrees. So there you go. Our image is now the right way up. So that was nice and easy, wasn't it? The second thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten this image because it is crooked. 
Um, obviously, if you print it, that's great. You can cut it out straight. Um, but I would like this image straight in case I want to add it to a page with lots of other images to print. So I'm going to hold down my command key and I'm going to press plus and that is going to zoom me in. OK, you can also hold the command key down and press the minus button and that will zoom you out. If you hold the command key down and press zero, that will make your page fit your window or document window. It will be the exact same size. So you've got those three keys next to each other, the plus, the minus and the zero. So if you hold down the command key and press any of those buttons, you're going to zoom in and out or you're going to fill your page. Um, fill your window with your document. Now for the tool that I'm going to use I want to zoom in because I want a good view. Now I'm just going to scroll down my page so I can see the straight line along the edge of this page that I scanned. Now all of these tools that have a little kind of um, triangle in the corner that means there are multiple tools in that selection. And it just happens that I've used the ruler tool recently, so that's on the top. That's the tool we want. You might find your eyedropper tool is the one showing. I think that is the kind of the standard. That's the one that's generally there. So you're going to click and hold and go down to your ruler tool. So as you can see, we've now got a little ruler attached to our cursor. Now, um, we've got a straight line to use. If you were using a photograph, you might have a fence, you might have um, a horizon, you might have uh, the wall of a building. You can use any of those things to use this technique to straighten an image. So this can be kind of transferred to photographs too. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold and I'm going to drag along that straight line. And when I get to a point, I'm going to let go you can do this with a very short line, it doesn't have to be too long. So you can now see that ruler selection is made. I want to go back to image, I want to go to image rotation, but this time I'm going to use arbitrary. This gives me the angle of that line. Now we want to straighten it, we are going to rotate the canvas by that angle by hitting OK. Now if I command and zero, you will now see the page isn't straight, but the document I scanned is. So we're one step closer to achieving our goal today. I'm now going to select our marquee tool. Now the rectangular marquee is usually the tool that is showing on the top, but if I click and hold that, you can see that there are other marquee tools underneath to make a selection. These, these three tools here are selection tools. Um, I'm going to select this rectangular marquee tool. Now you get your little target, you can click and drag across your image and as you can see it goes off the page and if you get this slightly wrong, I'm going to make it wrong on purpose, you can see I've cropped off my text at the bottom there and I've not lined up very well with the top. Now without selecting any other tool, I can click, hold and I can move this selection around. Okay, so if we get it wrong, that's our first option. We can just move the selection. You can also use your up and your down arrow keys to move your selection. So that's another way you can move that. If you've got it really wrong and you want to start again, hit the command key and D. Now that dismisses your marching ants. The little dotted line, I've always called the marching ants because my lecturer did when I was at uni. Um, so you, your command and D will dismiss your marching ants or your selection that you've made. You can then start again and reselect the area that you would like. Now I'm going to just get those words in at the bottom and let go and now we have our selection. Again there are different ways of doing this, I'm showing you the way that I believe is the easiest way and it's the most foolproof. This tool here is your crop tool, it's like cropping in Word, it's like cropping um, uh, PowerPoint, 
I'm going to select that crop tool and the selection is made. I'm going to hit enter and this is where I can edit again if I want by pulling in any of these lines. I've already selected using the marquee tool. I'm happy with that. So I'm, I've got two options. Up here, you have a little tick which will accept your crop. You've got a little no entry sign which will delete your crop or you can just hit enter on your keyboard. So there we go. We now have a, an image that's the right way up and it's cropped um, and it's now suitable to print. Um, so that is part one. The only thing I'm going to show you now is how to save the image. Now Photoshop's primary save function would be to a Photoshop document. Now if we had lots of layers here in our layers palette Photoshop documents will save all of the layers so if we want to come back and work on it later we've still got all of our layers and all of our options open to us. Um, the other option is to save it as a JPEG file, which is the kind of file you would want to save it as if you want to print it or if you want to send it to somebody or if you just generally want it as a, as a JPEG in your photos like all of your other images. So we're going to save it as a Photoshop document first because we are going to work on this again in another tutorial. So I'm going to go to save as and this is where, like any other software, you can change the name so I'm going to change this to tutorial oh. and tutorial one and I'm going to leave this as Photoshop in the first instance I'm going to hit save you're going to get this format options dialog box up you just hit OK and now I'm going to save it as a JPEG so again we get our same options up you can see that I'm saving this in documents you can save this wherever you like and I'm going to click on Photoshop, I'm going to change the format to JPEG. If we had lots of layers here at this point, it would flatten them into just one layer. And I'm going to save. You will get your JPEG options up here. You've got a slider here, or a drop down box here, or a number here. They all do the same thing. They change the quality of your image. So. If you want to print these images, you want it at the maximum image. If it's an image you wish to put onto Etsy, for example, you can change the quality to 6 and that would stop people being able to print your image at a high quality. We're going to leave it at 12 and I'm going to hit OK. So we now have our straightened image and it's saved. We can now go to that image and print quite happily. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please bear in mind what I said about copyright. Um, I know there are absolutely loads of different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. I just wanted to show you a very simple, basic way that if you have not done any of this before. So um, again, thank you so much for watching. Please leave me your comments if you've not found this interesting or if you've not found it very easy to follow and I will change the format of the tutorials in the future. Thanks again. Bye.